Brother Joshua. Heavenly Father, we come unto your throne, Father God, with boldness and confidence, knowing, Lord God, that uh, this is the time that is set by you, Father God. And Lord, as we study your words tonight, Father God, Lord, we pray, Father, that your presence, Lord, be with us, Lord. Uh, and we pray, Father God, that um, uh, you will open our eyes uh, that, um of understanding, Father God, that we will be able, Father God, to ingest everything, Father, Lord, for your glory alone, Father God. Mm. And um, yes, God, uh, we praise you, we bless your name, Father God. Lord, thank you for the word, Father God. And yes, oh God, we pray that you bless also. Lord, ang gagamitin mong vessel for tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, we can start. Okay. Sure. Apo, mm -hmm. For our uh, first song, let's sing. Uh, uh, I could sing of your love. Mm -hmm. Over the mountains and the seas, you're
You step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that me, this heart adore you, oh, my life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to King of fathers, oh so highly exalted, glorious in the Humbly you came to the Okay, thank you so much, Joshua. And uh, now we will come into the word. Okay, I have uh, uh, the privilege to introduce to you Pastora uh, Gladys Anoba, our speaker for tonight. Hello, Stora. Yeah. Stora, yes. good evening. Good evening, everyone. Are are we gonna do this in English or uh in Wala um, naman yata si Melinda. So, yeah. so we're gonna do this in Taglish. Taglish, yeah. She's not okay. around. All right. If my nose will bleed, it's not gonna be much bleeding, right? A little bit. <laughs> Hello, uh, Raymond, and hopefully that I will be able to see all of you. Hello. 
yeah if you can own your your video then it's more comfortable because we can see each other anyway praise god thank you thank you for blessing me this opportunity i'm very thankful to the lord for uh pastor rebecca for giving this me this opportunity to be able to share to you uh this message is really very important message actually anyway everything when it comes to the lord is very important so i will be sharing the ppt that i had prepared and please let me know if you can see it. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, let me. All right. So it's visible for everyone, right? So as oh sorry. So I as you can see, the 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 title of the lecture that we are going to tackle is the gospel of the Bible and evangelism of the Bible. So we believe that to be able for us to do the evangelism of the Bible, we must have the revelation of the gospel of the Bible. Without that, you'll be, we will just be doing the evangelism, but it's not purely the, the evangelism Jesus taught. Because the evangelism Jesus taught in the Bible uh, the, Jesus thought is really in the Bible. And it's very important for us to know this truth. So we are doing this actually. Uh, it's not uh, for the purpose of uh, we are building up association, organization. No, it's just a matter of as a body of Christ. So we just want to grow together. So to unite together as a body of Christ. First, let me pray. Father, I come in your presence, O oh Lord. Together with uh, my brethren here, O oh Lord, you have chosen for them to be uh, here together, O oh Lord, at this very moment. We just pray, O oh God, that you intervene and, O oh Lord, be in the midst of us. Use me only as an instrument that I will do this work not by my own might and power, but by thy spirit, O oh Lord. I cannot do this, O oh Lord, on my own. I cannot even allow help them to be able to understand this, O oh Lord, without you opening and allowing everyone to comprehend, O oh Lord, open our spiritual understanding deeply, O oh Lord. Lord, we are really searching for the, your worthy ones, O oh God, the, the disciple that you have chosen oh, all over the world, O oh God. We just pray, O oh God, as you had prepared this, O oh God, um, there will be harvest, O oh God, harvest of your chosen people, O oh God, so that, O oh Lord, we will be able to work together, oh God, with Pastor Rebecca in that area, oh Lord. She will have people with her, oh God, uh, who's going to work together with her. And your name alone will be glorified forever and ever in the name of Jesus, who's truly the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. All right. So let's proceed. Uh, do we have Pastor Joanna here? So I have my partner. Pastor Joanna Green, she is my partner in the Philippines. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's say hello, Pastora. <laughs> All right. She was supposed to do the lecture, so she apologized because she didn't know her schedule. Uh, she's going for the clinic. So anyway, we're going to start now. So we start with this word, true and false disciples. So... As you can see in Matthew 7, Jesus himself, he didn't send angels, he didn't send uh, uh, prophets, disciples, or any, any messengers. But he himself came down on earth to warn us this. He says this, this on Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, so you can see that they are calling him Lord, Lord, right? Is that clear? Maliwanag ba na siya ang tinatawagan? So they call him Lord. They acknowledge him as Lord. But Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So you may be calling him Lord, but if you're not doing the will of the Father, so you are not qualified to enter heaven and that's very 
alarming, isn't it? And verse 22, it says, and who are these? Uh, he considered these people who are these coming to him and call him Lord. In that day, you say many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. These people are calling him, Lord, these people are doing work in his name. But yet Jesus said, I never knew you. And he said, away from me, you evildoers. And that's the worst thing in here that despite of using his name and prophesying in his name, done signs and number, drive out demons. But yet Jesus said to them, I never knew you and you evildoers. Come to think about it. It's very difficult for us to comprehend this if the Lord will not really give us the understanding. For some people, it's very offensive. If they are not teachable, if they are not humble. But I truly believe God uh, allow us to be part of this today because we are special to him. So what does God say about adding and removing of words from the scripture? This is another uh, things that we need to uh, take into precaution is very important. Revelation 22, 18 says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of the scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God says, uh, God will add to that person to the plagues described in the scroll. So if anyone takes words away from the scroll or prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the true tree of life the meaning you, you cannot enter, right? And in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. So God warned consequences of adding or taking away from it. Proverbs 36, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. And who is the liar? Only the devil is a liar, right? So God didn't want us to be part of his ministry, a ministry of lying. So. It's very uh, alarming because we always think that, oh, I am not adding any words in the Bible when I read it. I don't add it. You know, I don't change it. But where do we normally add and possible that we are taking away? It's when we are translating the message by our own might and power. And when we are not guided by the Holy Spirit. That's the time that we didn't realize that we are adding and to the word of God. All of this is happening because we are not aware of the purpose, what truly the purpose, why the Bible was written. The Bible was written for us to believe in Jesus, that is the Christ, the son of God. And by believing this way, we will receive life. That's the purpose of God. Our salvation is very, very important for him. The reason why he's not coming back yet, because he wants everyone, all of us to be saved. Now let's go to the point, let go one. What, 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 is your, uh, what is your definition of the gospel? Well, Pastor Rebecca, I'm re I received a message from, Pastor Rebecca, sorry. Uh, I received a call from Evelyn, Pastor Evelyn. Is it okay that we ask her to join? What do you think, Pastor Rebecca? Can I invite her in? I cannot, we cannot hear you. I need your permission. Yes, she can okay. join. Okay, I will send her. I will send her. Sorry for the... All right, I, I already sent her. So let's uh, start with lecture one. What is your definition of the gospel? So this is very important for us to answer because uh, nowadays we can hear uh, so many people are coming out with different, different gospel, you know, just to uh, be able to invite people to, to be able. But Sora, I'm on meeting. Can you please join us on the meeting? I already sent you the link. I, I, uh, I'm sorry. 
uh, now now at the moment thank you thank you so what where was i am so what is your definition of the gospel because nowadays so many gospel are coming out just think about this if you are going to evangelize and tell people uh, that when they receive jesus as their personal lord and savior then there will it's a bad of roses for them everything is just nice all of this thing you know of course people will accept him right but if you are going to tell people, hey, when you accept Jesus as for your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to uh, go through a lot of persecution, you know, a lot of things going to happen your way, and the devil is really going to attack you. Do you think they will receive Jesus? They will not accept him, right? But that's what the, uh, the, the thing is happening nowadays. Because uh, most of the messenger, the evangelists now, uh, they just want people to uh, come to Jesus without giving to them the pure gospel of the Bible. They just want people to come to the church. So many people will come to the church. That's their, uh, that's their purpose. But today, God, we are so blessed because God has warned us on, on all this thing. You don't need to tell, uh, give people the bed of roses and you don't have to tell people about what's going to happen to them. Uh, if they accept Jesus, then there will be a lot of persecution. You just share to them the gospel. Because the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God for salvation. So when, when you say, I when we say, what's the, the, gos, uh, the definition of the gospel? Because in the Bible itself, false gospel, that is not the true gospel, is already happening. This is all behind here is actually Satan. We can see on the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Whose mind the God of this age has blinded. So the, the God of this age is referring to Satan. He blinded the mind, not the eyes, the mind who do not believe. So let the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ with the image of God to shine on them. So in other words, he doesn't like preacher, messenger to share the gospel of Christ he doesn't mind if you are talking about Jesus. He doesn't care. You talk about Jesus 24-7. Provide that you are not bringing people to Jesus through the gospel of Christ. Because it's the gospel of the Bible. You are sharing to the person. So you that's why you see nowadays, all over the world, they know Jesus. They believe in Jesus. But they have different perception. Some churches, even here in the Philippines itself, you know that, right? They believe in Jesus that he is only a prophet. They believe in Jesus that he is only a man. They do not believe in Jesus that he is God. Then some of them even do not believe in the Holy Spirit. And some of them, uh, you know, they, they have other, other uh, understanding. In other words, people are confused. And this confusion came from the attack of satan because satan doesn't want us to believe in the true uh, gospel of the bible because he doesn't want us to come to jesus because he knows when we come to jesus through the gospel of the bible to the scripture he knows what is the result we are going to be baptized in the holy spirit and once the holy spirit is freely with us no one and nothing can go against us anymore because it's no longer us, us who live, but Christ in us. So let's move. Let us see what happened uh, during the time of Apostle Paul. We can see on Galatians chapter 1, where are these words, different gospel came out? Is it only now? Ever seen in the Bible is already written. Apostle Paul said, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You see? You are, the, uh, you are living away. You are leaving the one who have called you. And now you are turning to a different gospel. And this gospel, uh, on verse 7, it says, which is really no gospel at all. Because there is only one gospel 
and that gospel is the gospel of Christ. Jesus is the Christ. So even evidently, evidently, some people are throwing you into what confusion. People are confused. Why? Because they're they're they are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. What is true? They mix it up. They're adding and uh, taking away. This is what really is happening. I was turning out. She had saying early on, that's the mistake that we can do. When we translate the message of the gospel of the Bible, not guided by the Holy Spirit, not guided to the purpose. When we, are, when we say not guided by the Holy Spirit, we are no longer uh, following the purpose why the Bible was written to us. That's why Apostle Paul was very strong in saying, but even we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under curse. So the word says other than the one we preach to you. We're going to uh, uh, talk about this later. And then he says, as we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than the what you accepted, let them be under curse. See? other than we preach to you, other than what you accepted. Because faith comes by hearing. So God doesn't want us to be part of those liars, part of those false uh, a prophet. He wanted us, he's giving us this truth because he wanted us to be part of his kingdom because he wanted us to be witness for him. God wanted to use us. In our days, especially we are in the last, last day wherein people only like to hear what they like. And then not only that in Galatians, in, even in the church of Corinth, if you, if you recall the, the, uh, the previous life of Apostle Paul, he go, those people attack those people, persecute those people who believe that uh, Jesus is the Christ. He killed them. He murdered them. He do everything that he can. In fact, when he, he came to know this truth, uh, when he, he encountered Jesus that he is the Christ, he was on his way to Damascus with letter with him so that to persecute all those and put in chain all those who claim that Jesus is the Christ, right? And then he was now worried. Now that he came to realize they were actually waiting for the Messiah. But the problem is, ng time na yun, they do not want to accept, they disagree that Jesus is the Messiah. And he was one of them. But now, after he came to know that Jesus is truly the Christ, he is now in, in the other way. He is now going to... Uh, to, to preach about Jesus. And he was so worried. And then he say, but I'm afraid that Jesus Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning. Your mind, you see, the serpent is attacking, the Satan is attacking the mind. May somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to what? To Christ. Why did he say that? Because for if someone comes to you, and preaches other than the Jesus we preach, right? Same thing with Galatian, right? Or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you receive or a different gospel from the one you accept that you put up with it easily in half. If anyone comes and share to you Jesus, 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 you just accept it. At the end of the day, you get involved in a church wherein they call the name of Jesus, but they believe Jesus is only a prophet. Jesus is only a man. So let's move on. Now let us see what, what is there for the true gospel that Paul preached. If Paul says that you are receiving different gospel, so what is the gospel that Paul preached? Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. This is awesome. He was set apart for the gospel of God, not gospel of man, gospel of God. So the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So we can see that Apostle Paul, whatever he, the gospel that he's preaching is true, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> true 
his prophets in the Holy Scripture, according to what is written in the Old Testament. This is the gospel that Paul is teaching about regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David. So regarding his son, who as to his early life, so he turned into a flesh. And in the scripture, it says that the Messiah or Christ will come, it will be a descendant of David. And who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ. Already. So you can see that Apostle Paul was preaching that uh, the, the Jesus who, was, who died and was resurrected. Actually, other churches, they do this. When, when we talk about Jesus, they talk about Jesus was crucified and died. But what is, what, what is the point here? The point here is that uh, just a, a while ago, Apostle Paul was saying, why you are leaving? Why you are leaving this gospel? Now you started your own. You started your own strategy. And you're no longer using this gospel to, to bring people to, to Jesus. He suffered and died. And now you are doing your own strategy. Ah, let's do this this way. Maybe this, we're going to do it this way. So these people will come to the church. We promise them bed of roses, all of these things. No, God wants it us. That's why Apostle Paul says, imitate me for I imitate Christ. Even Jesus himself, when he was here on earth, he only uh, used the scriptures. He speak about himself quoting the Old Testament, fulfilling the work of Christ so that people may know that he is the Christ. So let us see further on Acts 17. So as was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue and on three Sabbath days, he, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. What, what, what does he do? He explained, he does not only explain, he also proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. And this Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. And we can see on Acts 18, when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. Actually, there's a one verse that I missed up. Acts chapter 9, immediately after Apostle Paul received the, the Holy Spirit from laying of hands by Ananias, he immediately went out and people were scared because they know that he is a persecutor. And here he is now. Isn't he this man? This is the one who's, uh, who came to, to chain us because we, are, we believe in Jesus that he's the Christ. But all, uh, Apostle Paul all the more proclaimed to them and but pet with them that indeed that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. So when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. So perhaps we, may, we uh, other people think, I heard this in the radio. Ah, because it's only Apostle Paul. He's the only one who is actually uh, preaching about, about Jesus. He's the only one who, you know, who, uh, who likes to talk about it. But let us see the rest of the apostle. Let's start with Peter. So the story of Peter, um, you know that he denied that he knows or he is a disciple of Jesus three times. It was meant for, to happen because it was, uh, uh, Jesus knew about it already actually. So Peter, we can see here uh, in this, uh, this is the time when the Pentecost, when people saw that, uh, they speak different, uh, they speak in tongue. And they were misunderstood. Uh, some people say, oh, they are drunk, they are drunk. That's why they are like that. And now Peter had to explain to them. He quoted the scriptures, everything what is written in the Old Testament. And he summarizes it on these people. He says they are not drunk. He cleared it to them. And Acts chapter 2, to summarize, what is the 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 gospel that he, he preached to them. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, what? 
both Lord and Christ. Christ is not just a savior. In fact, Christ is a savior because he is the Lord. He's God. He's God himself. So let us see. Oh, this is the one I was, uh, you can see the gospel that the apostle and the early church preached as well. On Acts chapter 5, verse 42, it says, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop. What? They never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news. What is the good news? That Jesus is the Messiah. In, in, in later on, if we're going to have more time for more lecture we're going to understand deeper uh, the background of this good news. Why is it good news? It's, uh, then we will know deeper and we will appreciate uh, Jesus being the Messiah more deeper. So for now, and this is Aquila and Priscilla. They are deacons. They are pen maker. They received the gospel also to Apostle Paul. And let us see this uh, Apollos. Let us get to know Apollos. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man. So Apollos is a learned man with a Torah knowledge of the scriptures. So we call it now, uh, in our days, uh, we address them, or they are doctoral, you know, they are theologians, they are, you know, they are teachers, teachers of the law, all of this thing. And more about him. Verse 25, he had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and thought about Jesus accurately. Look at that. And thought about Jesus actually accurately. Though he knew only the baptism of John. But he can speak about Jesus accurately though he only knew the baptism of John. So we can see that nowadays that when we talk about the baptism of John, it's... Uh, we talk about repentance, repentance, all of this thing, and go for water baptism, all of this thing, to accept Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. So, but he need to be, although he, uh, he taught about Jesus accurately, although Apostle uh, Apollos is a, a learned man, a thorough knowledge of the scripture, and he been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great favor and taught about Jesus accurately, but he needs to be upgraded. Do you believe if I tell you that all of us actually, no matter how deep you are in the word of God, we must not stop. Look at him. There is still missing in him. And only these deacons, Aquila and Priscilla, elders in the church came and talked to him. He began to spoke boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, what did they notice? They notice something. There is something missing. There's something not enough with him. There's something to talk about him. There's something to teach him. So they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So he needs to be upgraded. And that's what we are doing now. And what happened? When Apollos wanted to go after the conversation, they had a fellowship. And when Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. So when Apollos went to, uh, uh, to Achaia, uh, when he arrived, and this is what happened, he was a great help to those who by grace had pity. Wow. Why? Because he's now carrying the power of God. His Apollos is now going on out now because he's not, not knowledgeable. But he is now bringing the power of God is going to share to them the gospel now that gives life, not just knowledge. We need life. And what happened to him? For he vigorously reputed his Jewish opponents in public debate, proving from the scripture that Jesus was the Messiah. Apollos now is no longer ashamed, according to Romans 1.16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God for salvation. Whatever race, not only them, not only Peter, not only Apostle Paul, not only Aquila, not only Priscilla, even Apostle John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, he says, is born of God. See, Jesus say, unless one is born again, 
they cannot enter the kingdom of God unless one is born of water and spirit. They cannot enter the kingdom of God. Who is allowed to go in, in, in the kingdom of God? Only the born, only, only the children of God. Those who believe that he's a Christ. This is connected to John chapter 1, verse 12. Everyone uh, who believes that in his name, meaning believe that he is the Christ. When you believe in Jesus that he is the Christ, this power in that name. This power in the name of Jesus, because when you believe that he is the Christ, the power in that name that solve our problem with Satan's sin and being separated from God. When we believe that, we became born of God, meaning we received the assurance of our salvation. We can tell the whole world. If you ask me now, if I go to heaven, yes, I will go to heaven. Hey, I just saw you just now. You, you said something that is not right. I'm not going to heaven because of my own work. I'm going to heaven because I believe. I believe that Jesus is my, my Christ. He paid everything for me. I go to heaven because I believe in him. I know I'm not yet that perfect. But I know I'm on my way. Because I have him in me who is helping me out. So we are not trying to be religious here. <laughs> we just want uh, people to know that we are so blessed. I still make mistakes. We still do make mistakes. But the fact that we know. We do not like to lean on that kind of light anymore. Because we have the power of God in us helping us to overcome. And look at here, all of them, they were preaching the gospel of the Bible because this is the assurance that give us salvation. And you know that Apostle John, and not only that, even uh, the Bible, Apostle John also says this, he summarized, even the Bible itself preaches the gospel, Jesus is the Christ. You see, the reason why the Bible was written but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Meaning you receive salvation, meaning you have you receive the, the spiritual life because we are that. This is the problem that we have, actually, a spiritual problem. We're going to talk more about it uh, in, in more lecture, deeper. And... The same Apostle John who wrote this, and this is very important. He says, he says here clearly, anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ, what does it mean? It means they don't have God in them. Whoever com continues in teaching has both the Father and the Son. To other people, this is really very offensive. But when you look unto it, it says, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. If anyone who welcomes them, they share in their wicked work. Remember the Matthew 7 just now? I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. I never knew you, you, you who practice wicked ways. This is it. Anyone welcomes them, share in their wicked work. Why? Because they are not doing the work of God. Somebody asked Jesus on the book of John 6. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. This is what God wants us to do. This is the work of God that we proclaim. We evangelize. We go and tell people to believe in Jesus that he is the Christ because he can never be our Lord if he is not a Christ. Because the deeper we believe in, 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 in uh, the, the deeper we believe in grow in the knowledge of Christ, Jesus will reign as Lord of our life. When we believe in Jesus that he is the Christ, we are believing in the Father, we are believing in the Son, we are believing in the Holy Spirit. Because Christ manifested as the Father, Christ as manifested as the Son, Christ manifested as the Holy Spirit. Here we can see the triune God. 
And Jesus thought, said about on Matthew 7, verse 21, and this is the will of him. Those who can enter heaven, those who do the will of the, the Father, and he said, this is the will whom he sent me, referring to the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can see, uh, to summarize all of, all of it, actually, what we learned today, uh, what we learned today, actually, God is upgrading our, our faith to what is really written in the Bible. Because we may hear people teaching us, but we have to be sensitive enough now. Because in the book of uh, John chapter 7, it says, if anyone wants to know uh, if a preacher or a messenger is preaching really uh, the will of God, he shall know concerning the doctrine. What gospel are they sharing? Amen. So let me pray. Father, I come in your presence, giving glory, thankful unto you. And we are looking forward to God that you continually help us to grow deeper, oh God, that we will have more session for an opportunity for us to be together, oh Lord, so that we'll be able to continually grow together in knowing you, oh God, so that we'll be able to use us, oh God. Lord, how can we go out and, and, and evangelize and talk to people about you if you will not reveal yourself to us? Oh Lord, please help pour more grace unto us so that we will not be a, a liar, oh God. We will not have fellowship with the, 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 the evil ones, Satan, who is destroying and is spoiling everything, oh God, what you have given to us, oh God. Lord, pour more grace unto all of us who are here in this platform, especially, oh God, that we'll be able to come, oh Lord, uh, in your presence, oh God, giving praise, giving glory unto you. We'll be able to do your will, oh Lord. Oh Lord, allow us to grow deeper in the knowledge of Christ, oh God, so that we'll be able, oh God, to be partaker and really be children of God. Thank you for everyone here, O oh Lord. I praise you for the life of Pastor Rebecca. I, I, I give praise and thanks unto you for this platform and for the opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. All right, Pastor, maybe we can hear feedback from anybody. All right. Yes. Can we hear from you guys? They are so quiet. Why? Raymond, say something. You're so cute. What did you learn today? You're muted. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I learned that um that uh we should uh make sure na yung church na pinupunta natin is you know have the right doctrine na natin na natin so basically that's it oh praise god awesome so did you find it that uh, uh the the gospel we are uh, sharing here is really the gospel from the bible are you convinced okay yep, yep. you are so blessed i didn't uh, i didn't reveal it to you it's the father in heaven reveal it to you is the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Yeah. There's no power in me that I can do that. But the Holy Spirit, you are so Amen. blessed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, the rest. What about Joshua? Uh, I learned today that uh, uh, yeah, uh, True worshiper is getting uh is always getting persecuted kasi nga sumusunod tayo sa uh, sa ating Panginoon Diyos. So we're not being hypocrite on our uh on our sa word na pinapahatid natin sa ating mga kapatid at at tsaka yung dapat na ipahatid natin nga yeah, is with is dapat yung true doctrine or yung totoong doctrine. 
Or, at saka yung totoong doktrina is always nanggagaling sa ating Panginoon Diyos na buhay, hindi sa Alleluia. Yeah. Ibang tao. Yun Amen. Yun po may share po. Praise God. So, did you find it that this is really from the Lord? The gospel that we are Amen. sharing. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, Amara, are you there? Amara. Uh-huh. Bang. Oh, Bang. Bang. Hello, Bang. Sleeping na ba si Bang? What? Joshua, is this also yours? Joshua? Or is it different? Oh. Joshua? Joshua, ikaw din or another Joshua? Ako, ako sa akin din po yun. Ah, okay, Lani? 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 Sorry, I was on mute. Hi, good evening. Hello, Lani, good so, evening. Yeah, this is my first time to attend. So, um, what I have learned is that if you really know the word of God, you will also not be easily swayed by any other doctrine. Um, because if you are deeply rooted to God's word and you personally know your God and Savior, then uh, you would know and you would believe it. And you will really also know if there are imposters or if they are trying to bend the word of God. Mm. Wow, praise God, Manny. So you found it so beneficial what we had learned today? Of course. It, okay. What it did is it re-emphasizes um, the belief that we have um, mm. in God's word to just hold on to it and mm. really know wow. we are God. Okay. Praise God. God gave you the confirmation. Hallelujah. Now let's uh, listen from your pastor. Pastor Rebecca, it's, you take the floor now. Yeah. Thank you. Can I add something? <laughs> oh, go ahead. So cute. Go ahead. Yan niya po, sabi sa Bible is, uh, our God is the Word and the Word is our God. So, paano ba tayo makakausap ng Panginoon? It's true Bible. So, Mm-hmm. Lang lang po. Thank you. It's awesome, right? That's why the oh, word of God, the word is God Himself, you know, and He turned into a flesh. You know, He didn't just give us a message, He turned that word into a flesh, meaning He gave Himself so that we will be able to have communion, communication with Him, fellowship with Him, so He can solve our problem, right? That's one the, the the beauty about knowing this truth. Okay, Pastor Rebecca, please. Ani na pa ako nag English Pastor na dos blit ako. Ito mga ito pala okay naman pala taga. <laughs> o kasi mayroong ano isa na nag-aattend na puti but um, she's not here with us tonight. So, I've been attending Pastor Gladys uh, Uh, ilang buwan na ba, Pastora? Is there a month? <laughs> Wala pa yata, no? Yeah. Mm. Naka, ano kayo, Pastora? Nakamute. Nakamute. Oh, sorry. I think maybe more than one month. More than one month. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I get up uh, actually at four or five just to attend their meetings. And in the beginning, nagang ano rin ako kasi uh, Uh, there were things that uh, I was really asking, but then when I embrace um, everything, uh, the more miracles I have, uh, I have seen in my life. So many signs and wonders followed me when I put Jesus Christ at the center. And um, um, ito yung nangyari. If I have Christ in me, I have the Father and i have the holy spirit kasi ano naman siya talaga uh, the bible speaks that um, even noong ano nung he was being baptized sabi ng uh, heavenly father sa kanya this is my son 
whom I am well pleased. And then, um, um, ang sabi niya, uh, ni Jesus, all the authority under uh, on heaven and earth has been given unto me. And uh, sabi rin niya na no one comes to the Father except through me. And uh, talagang inano ko kasi, uh, I believe, I, I, am, I thought I, yung ano, uh, the church uh, uh, na inano ko is, um, is being gifted uh, with the signs and wonders, prophecy. I have learned that the true prophet is really Jesus Christ. And the more that, um, yeah, yung sabi ko nga, I am magnified, like I said, the more that signs and fo uh, wonders followed me when I had to set Jesus Christ at the center. Even in just a prayer, uh, na nakita ko as I was sharing, uh, nakita kami ni Pastora Gladys sa, uh, ano, the program ni Sarah Balabagan. And uh, yeah, in, in just a prayer, yung, yung tatai yung bata, in just a prayer, yung uh, confused, depressed na bata, yung ano, he will uh, have the, uh, sobriety. Because when I pray, talagang I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I was sharing, there was even one time when uh, the alarm the alarm of the uh, IB machine has been like um, alarming and alarming. And I told the, the mom of the patient, let's pray. And I declared in the name of Jesus Christ, you will stop alarming until the medication will be fully delivered. This is our prayer, I said. And it, it, it followed yung ano, because of, of the name of Christ. Because every everything in, here on earth bows under the name of Jesus Christ. And the parents were so amazed because for 30 minutes, the, the machine did not alarm. It is because I asked Jesus to manifest. When you really have Jesus, you have it all. Because the, uh, from Genesis to Revelation, it all speaks about Jesus. And in uh, the look back, bayon pastora yung Luke chapter twenty two. The the prophet, uh, all the prophecies that has been said about him in the Old Testament has uh, many of it has already come to pass. Amen. That he is really the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is not only our Savior, but he is our one and all. Amen. And I cried last night when I uh, when uh, natanto ko talaga. If I have Christ, automatically I have the Father and I have the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> and if you have the Holy Spirit, you will know which doctrine is right. Amen. Because it will guide you through the truth. Yeah. Bible is not meant is not meant for argument. It's meant for uh, to change some somebody's life. And yeah. if a changed life, if you have a changed life, there's nothing to argue. Amen. And Correct. Yeah. It's not uh, one thing more, Pastor, that I would like to to add. It's not about adding or subtracting, but mm. it is about upgrading hallelujah yeah, i like that <laughs> your belief uh, without the uh, ano ba without criticism without uh, ganito ganyan and you know that uh, you're uh, yeah, you're in tune with heaven Amen. you are upgraded yeah, it, yeah. it's so to be upgraded yeah it's so it's so uplifting. Yeah, what is really important, we are doing the work of God. Whatever you do, whether you, what gift you have, healing, uh, maybe you have in the gift of teaching, what is important is the purpose of the Bible. Um, like for Jesus, the Bible says um, before 31, 
uh, the Bible was written for us to believe in Jesus, that he is the Christ, the son of God. But before that, on verse 30, it says, there are still many miracles, signs, and wonders Jesus did, which no longer written. But even those written, uh, it's for us actually to believe. Because Jesus did signs and wonders and everything that he did, all uh, people are uh, lame, were able to walk. Those He did all those healing and he fed the 5,000, everything. And that was recent, all of these things. He only had one purpose. So that people may believe that he is the Christ. So our time now, we are doing all of these things. This platform is... Uh, uh, God is uh, giving us all the understanding. He's revealing himself to us clearly. His purpose is that he will be able to use us. So we'll be able to go out and help people to believe in Jesus, that he is the Christ. Because the gospel now is really diluted. Na corrupt na siya. Iba na yung inaisip ng mga tao. Even the word grace, uh, instead, uh, grace is supposed to, uh, the power of God for us not to sin, now, for those people who are confused, it becomes a license to sin. Ah, ligtas ta ako. It's okay. Even I commit sin now. You know, uh, ligtas na rin ako. So it becomes a license, approval for them to, to sin. Naging spoiled child sila. So we do not like that. And God do not like that to happen to us. Because the mere fact, when we have Jesus the Christ in us, the Bible says we do not continually sinning because of him. Because we have him in us. So we, when we see ourselves, well, we enjoy ko pa yung kasalanan. Na. That's another story. You, know? you are not supposed to be enjoying that. Diba? Dapat ayaw mo na gawin ito. That is the true repentance. You realize that it's wrong and you do not like to do that again. Amen? So, uh, hmm, exactly. I like also what uh, Lenny said just now. And, uh, it's, it's true, you know, when you are rooted in, that's why we have this platform. We need to grow deeper. We don't stop, even though you are very well in this. That's why all of the meetings that we have, I always attend. I'm the number one, uh, always number number one present. <laughs> I don't have standing thought. <laughs> because we really need to grow. You know. the, actually, Jesus encouraged us to have fellowship. So this is a very good beginning for us. This is the, the first day. And yet this, I can see that uh, it's God. Hindi tayo binigo ni Lord. I was saying yung pastora, right? Hindi tayo binigo ni Lord. Because without him in the midst of us here, wala naman ito. This will be just knowledge. It will not give life to us. Diba? He deserves all the glory. He, siya talaga ang, God is so good to us. And you are so blessed because Pastor Rebecca is your pastor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So we're going to have lecture uh, next schedule. Let's let um, you know. So we're going to have Pastor Rebecca have the, the copy actually. You can message me and I can email you as well. So yeah. you, you, you will be advanced with the and we also have a platform for youths every Sunday. But I don't think uh, okay sa time niyo, it's going to be 6.30 in the evening. So by that time, I believe you are still snoring. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have different time. We can, we can have your time. I can, we can do that, actually. And you can invite your friends, your family, you know, your girlfriend, if you have boyfriend, you know can buy them so you you in that way you are doing world evangelization Diba? yeah thank you for the worship uh, uh joshua thank you so much you 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 know in, in, even in worship you, you have to ask god lord I know when you go in singing in a karaoke whatever or you are a singer then people will ask hey, can i request you to sing this song <gasps> You know, I learned that. Lord, what do you want? What do you, what is your request? So I will sing what is your request. <laughs> you know, when you have personal relationship with him, oh, this just can come in your mind. Oh, Lord, what is your request? 
You know, we are asking people to, what do you want me to sing for you? But did we ever ask God, Lord, today is Sunday or whatever it is. What song you want me to sing for you? What is your request? Diba? So he, he, because God is looking for a worshiper who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. So, great day. So, I think you you have to go to sleep, right? What time is it? <laughs> it's uh, 9.30. Oh, Almost 9.30. So, what time normally you go to bed? From work. I just came from work and uh, I have not really showered. 